Cheerios. Was Cheerios part of the Mandela effect? No. They just They're just boring, Cheerios. Bland. Cheerios are the same in every timeline, folks. Yep. Same with crack same with graham crackers. Same with crack. That's what I thought you were gonna say. Yeah. Graham crackers. Yeah. The original anti masturbatory aid. I thought that was um uh Kellogg's. I thought that was like special K. No, yeah, yes, you're right. It was cornflakes. Yeah. It was cornflakes. So like we're gonna make something so boring that you'll never want to masturbate. Yeah. This is your life now. Cornflakes. <laughs> that, that's their slogan. This is, that's their slogan. <laughs> this is your life now. Yeah. Cornflakes. Corn I've flakes. never understood why their like logo is a chicken. Is because it's not. It's it's a it's a rooster. It's a cock. Well, oh my god. <laughs> you see, oh it, all, god. it all makes sense, right? They're reminding me of cock. <laughs> they're like, well, they're, they're letting... I'm, eating, I'm eating my cornflakes. Like, huh? Is that a chicken? No, it's a rooster. Yeah. Cock. Yeah. Cock. And no. It's, and it's watching you. With its one eye. With its one. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, I boy. have to touch it. <laughs> I think it's more of a warning. You know. I don't know why. It's just it. It looks a little menacing to me. I'm yeah. gonna look at the logo. Yeah, like it all has. It's like a two D logo with one eye looking right at you, saying, "It's like I'm watching you. You touch yourself, I'll know, and I'll tell the government, and they'll tell their database." Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's. Is it a rooster? It is a rooster, but you just look at it. It's a little menacing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's it, like it's it's staring into your. It soul. even looks like like a, a a penis. It does actually. Why would they make an anti-masturbatory cereal when all they do the whole time is remind you of penises? I think it's to remind you not to touch it. They're like, hey, while you're in the cereal, keep in mind, this is off limits. Yeah, like as you're eating it, they like smack your hand every time you get close. Like, nah, but I gotta pee. No, don't touch. I'll do it. Yeah. (laughs) I'll hold it for you. No, come on. (laughs) Anyway, this is the Zeitgeist Podcast. My name's Nick. Oh, my name's Greg. Greg Sorry, I'm, I'm really focused on the cornflakes right now. Okay. Staring in my soul. Yes. Do not touch yourself. I won't. I promise. I'm just going to eat more cornflakes instead. It's all the shame with none of the satisfaction. <laughs> cornflakes. That's their new logo. That's a, cornflakes. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> cornflakes. It's food. It, yeah, it's food. Cornflakes. <laughs> as as empty else. as you'll feel if you decide to masturbate today. <laughs> I hope you feel... <laughs> cornflakes, you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Just cornflakes. No son of mine. <laughs> cornflakes. I, I, okay, I'm done. I, I, I was yeah. like, ah, we can set all the good ones. Yeah, it's all good. Let's. I, I think I still think first one's the best. All the okay. All the shame, but none of the satisfaction. Cornflakes. <laughs> all right. So we're here for part two of CERN, the concerning tale of CERN. Yeah. I'm, we, I, I'm waiting for more. I'm. I'm actually very. We're in t- I'm deeply disturbed. I hope yes. you know. Yes. So I need to know more. And hopefully these next few theories will lighten that load because they're absolutely ridiculous so but they're fun to talk about because i good that's 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 the slogan of the podcast yes the one i said in part the everything i said in part one is the most concerning thing everything i'm about to tell you sounds like a sci-fi movie so great don't have an existential crisis just yet yeah wait till the end of this episode and then have an existential crisis and then once you do eat some cornflakes it'll bring you down yep exactly Corn It'll flakes. just kind of mellow you out. Cornflakes. Do not think about your existential doom. Yeah. Cornflakes. Ah, go ahead. Yeah, why not? <laughs> go ahead and masturbate. I don't care. You know <laughs> what? It's we tried. We we had a good run. Sixty some odd years, or however long cornflakes have been around. At this point, I'm too tired to care. Ah, rub one out for me. <laughs> for me. <laughs> Do it. Touch it. Yeah. <laughs> Just touch it. <laughs> okay. Enough. 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 Cock of the talk. Um. So CERN. What did they do? 
uh, they turned on a big machine that made things go spinny, that makes big energy go boom, and opens a Stargate portal um, to where? That's the mystery. And that's yep. what I'm going to be discussing is the magnetic energy vortex in the middle of the Gulf of Aden, and I believe it's Asia. I'm all about slogans today. I still stand by it's it's the roller derby of the science world. I really like that. Yeah, or of them, the atomic world. Because they're all hitting each other. Yeah, they're just running rough, in a circle as fast as possible. Creating and dark matter. Yeah. Discovering the God particle. It's just yeah. like a very like emo yeah. science experiment. Yeah. Like all about the darkness, your existential See, dread. See, that's the other thing. Like the, the particle has, it, they even have a nickname, right? Right. Just like in roller derby. Yeah, because what if they do it again and they discover, like, the devil particle? And it's like, because the other one's, like, white, or this one's, like, a little red. Yeah. So it's, like, a little oh, mean. It's a mean little particle. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it, it's a little, this it, one. Like, this one is just kind of, like, floating here, but this one's kind of, like, vibrating, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna get it's you. Just flying around the room, it's going people ping, in the ping, face. Ping. And then it hits you and it turns you a little mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, n- so, basically... They turned this thing on, and guess what they did? They done opened a portal again. Um, This is a very humorous article. Um, They said, This bizarre conspiracy theory that emerged online a few years back has gained a little bit of traction. Not much, though, because it's ridiculous. Great. That's what we're here for. This perplexing theory, described by some enthusiasts as the greatest conspiracy theory of all time, claims... They claim a magnetic anomaly opened up an interdimensional Stargate portal. I'm doing air quotes when I say it like that. Mm -hmm. In the Gulf of Aden. I don't know where that is. Oh, it says it right here. Sorry. Okay, good. Yeah, just read a little further next time. It is one of the busiest waterways in between Yemen and the Arabian Peninsula and the Somalian in the Horn of Africa. Okay. Important then. Yes. I did not read ahead because of my ADHD. Yeah. And my dyslexia. And dyslexia. Which is fine. So many problems. I accept you for who you are. I don't accept myself. I hate myself. Well. No, I don't. I've been practicing self-love. Practice self-love. Yeah. That's why you don't need more plates. <laughs> okay. Soon after A the- master el- <laughs> of self-love, this one. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. I self-love myself <laughs> six times a day. So much love. I, I love myself more than I love my wife. <laughs> Okay, these are jokes. She brought cornflakes home. I said, get that shit out of here. (laughs) You're harsh in my mellow, man. Uh, I don't think our wives listen to this podcast, but that was a joke. Disclaimer, that was a joke. Love you, Sweeney. Uh, All right, well, soon after this alleged Stargate portal opened up, a mysterious alien UFO spacecraft apparently came flying through it, according to the conspiracy theorists. Ooh. The concept of a Stargate portal is derived from science fiction. This device provides means of traveling between points in space in an instant. Conspiracy theorists fear that a strange portal that opens up inside or near Earth could expose human civilization to an invasion or a takeover by evil space aliens or demons. Oh, no. Or extra-dimensional creatures that we cannot physically comprehend. I don't even know what to do with that last one. My voice is so high. <laughs> oh, oh, that's all run by Disney. <laughs> the whole time it was the mouse. We, we are the most largest media conglomerate and we will buy you too, Pokemon. Actually, you could say they're the universe's largest media conglomerate. Oh my god. They also have stock in other planets and other extraterrestrial communities. They are the Stargate. <gasps> Walt Disney is the devil. He did. He was, I don't know if that's true. He was kind of mean. I don't think that's true, actually. Well, if the rumors are true, his little anti-Semitic head is frozen somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Waiting for a robot body to, to come scoop him up. Oh, that would be interesting. That would be, wouldn't it? Robo Disney. Robo Disney. Yeah. Robo Walt. Yeah. Okay, back on track. Yeah. <laughs> so, according to the conspiracy theorists, the extraordinary, extraordinarily otherworldly event, the alleged opening of the portal in the Gulf of Aden, drew the attention of the world military powers, including U.S., Russia, China, and the countries. They all sent naval fleets to the area. Um. It, there is a source for that, but it is the source is called Top Secret Source. Like the website is topsecretsource.com? Yes. Topsecretsource.blogspot.com? Yes. 
<laughs> run by Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. I don't know. It, it looks just like a random news like inquirer. So it's probably thing. nothing. If they did go to the Gulf of Aden, it's yeah. probably for their friendly bingo match that they do every year mm-hmm. in the Gulf of Aden with all the different world powers. Yeah, it's tons of fun. You should. Tons, get, you, so much fun. I, I, I watched the live stream. The Global Intelligence f- Files consist of more than 5 million emails dated July 2004 to December uh, 2011 obtained from a Texas-based Stratford, an international private intelligence security firm that consults for leading co- corporations and world governments. A report on f- on the files submitted that President Putin sent f- – Oh my god, this is so wordy. It's just basically a bunch of world powers sent people to investigate this portal. Basically, blah blah blah. It was it was uh, well known that Russia was mainly linked to this, um, and that this was caused by the activation of CERN to open up a portal. But then there were effects that caused a mysterious vortex to appear in the Gulf of Aden with ma- mysterious magnetic properties. Uh, it was small and weak and unstable, but and remained stable at certain times. However, in 2008, scientists raised concerns that this spiraling vortex was expanding rapidly and a threat to the world. The U.S. government panicked, and they sent a message to the top military powers for assistance in fighting this threatening unknown phenomenon. And so they bombed it. And then they bombed it again. And it didn't work. And they don't know what to do. So they tried being nice to it. That didn't work. That didn't work. So they gave it cornflakes to calm it down. It made it mad. Made it really mad. And now we're all going to die. Thanks, cornflakes. Appreciate it. Cornflakes. You're all going to (laughs) die. That's the logo. Or the slogan. Cornflakes. Eat them. You're going to die anyway. Yeah. Uh, Listen, what else are you living for? Eat the cornflakes. As panicked world governments converged on the Gulf of Aden, the alleged vortex continued to expand rapidly, causing major earthquakes in the Gulf of Aden. For the first time in in the area in modern times, according to the conspiracy theorists. So they're saying that this vortex caused these earthquakes that have never shown up there before. That's their evidence for that there's a vortex. Interesting. And that there was a high number of naval forces in the area. Interesting. Um, multiple reports in the conspiracy theory blogosphere refer to the alleged vortex... Uh, as in different ways as an electromagnetic vortex, a mysterious magnet vortex, a spiral magnetic field or wormhole, a magnetic a magnetic anomaly, an interdimensional anomaly, or an intergalactic stargate. So basically, whatever you want it to be, it is. Gotcha. <laughs> this next part kills that, me. That sounds about right. This next part is funny. It says, the sheeple, that's you and me, believe, <laughs> believe that the warships have gone to the Gulf of Aden to fight piracy, but that's just a cover-up. The theory is that they are trying to properly explain the, the phenomenon of the Stargate opening. One other theory claimed was caused by evil space aliens bent on world domination and destruction. Although other theories claimed was caused by the CERN... There it is. The CERN Hadron Collider, according to the conspiracy theorists. The rest of this says that it, this is actually... Oh my god, I did not read this last paragraph. So apparently, other theorists believe Putin uh, that wanted this vortex open and a Frankenstein reptilian-style monster came out of the portal and it turned out to be a descendant of the reptilians. I see. And thus, Putin wanted to form an alliance with extraterrestrial forces to undertake world domination as planned by the secret shadow government wait a minute this was all written by l ron hubbard wasn't it this is all a scientology book ah uh, yep there it is it says it the is. thetans right there yep and, and i have to pay ten thousand dollars to finish the article yeah <laughs> you reach the paywall and it's ten thousand dollars like pay me ten thousand or you or you go to hell you need a third eye to get to see the rest of this article they better find an eye, pay for it, get it surgically implanted, and then we tell you it's the wrong eye, and oh, then we'll kill you. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm, so, okay, let's play along, right? Maybe they did go to fight piracy. That's the official story. But they were actually space pirates. Oh. Or reptile pirates. <gasps> the, 
they fought dinosaurs. Yeah, can you imagine rep- alien dinosaurs? Reptile pirates, dude. Can you imagine? Oh my god. You got Barney on the deck, <laughs> swabbing the Barney poop on deck. the deck. Yeah, Bar- <laughs> Barney swabbing the poop deck, and then you've got Godzilla at the helm, and like all these reptile pirates, man. God, the way you said that reminded me of the, the song "The Ultimate Showdown." Yeah, Godzilla struck back with the bam bam bam. Yeah, man, that that's a throwback. That's a fun one. Uh, there was a project recently of called "The Ultimate Showdown Reanimated." So okay. a bunch of animators collabed and good. Like, the animation was terrible. In the they made it look like an anime, dude. It looked really? so good. It was just so good. It was like it looked like a movie. Like, well, I, I just remember the first time the Ultimate Showdown came out, the animation was like as good as we expected it to be. Yeah, it was like because our standards were way lower in 2007 or whatever. Yeah, it was made in Flash. Rest yeah, in peace, Flash. Yeah, and it's like it was so so terrible. And I realize now how much our standards have changed as time has gone on, like with internet related stuff. Because I tried to show my wife some videos from, you know, back in the day when YouTube was young, or even stuff I saw before YouTube, like on other other video hosting sites that no longer exist and shall not be named. Um, because videos. Because I can't remember their names. Stupid videos. Stupid videos was one. Yeah. Uh, Newgrounds had videos on it. Oh, Newgrounds um, is still kicking, dude. Is it really? Oh yeah, it's it's actually still doing pretty well surprising anyway like before youtube existed you had videos from wherever right so i showed her this stuff that was so so funny and i'm sitting there waiting for it to get funny and i'm like huh i realize now that our collective standards like the bar has been raised for what is and isn't funny right which is probably why we don't have any listeners on this podcast and it's just us talking to each other you know what holds up and stands the test of time so well from back in the day what home star runner yes that one that one I, I will always like Strong Bad with his emails are great. Mm. Oh Home my Star getting into his antics, the Halloween episodes. Oh my god. I'll always hold to that one. I love it. They still make occasional ones like once a oh, year. Really? They put out a new one. The website's still up, yeah. Uh, but Flash isn't supported anymore. How do they do they it? They just use like a new animation programs. They can still make it look the same way. Oh. Probably it looks okay. even better, honestly. Interesting. They you can still like use that type of animation. It just has to be through a different format. Gotcha. That's all. Yeah. Just Flash itself is a format that's outdated, so they just need it to be updated. We're we're doing that typical millennial thing where we're super nostalgic about everything. Well, Homestar Runner was really good. A lot it of people good. still like it. No, you know, I agree. I I think it's great. You no know freaking thing from that show just repeats in my head randomly all the time. What? Polly mascot foam lay. Me too. <laughs> all the time. That one's really yeah, that one's really stuck with me. Like Use it as a topping on soured cream. Because <laughs> it was like the old school strong bad yes. with the curly mustache. They're like, what do you say, Star Homer? What? What? <laughs> what? Or, oh God, I could pull it that all day. It's like, let's go to cheat. <laughs> yeah. Dude, man, I'm, I'm going to have to go watch those now. I'm an adult. I'm a dadgum adult. I'm a father and a husband. Oh. And I'm going to have to go and watch Homestar Runner again just for the pure nostalgia of it. You like, I mean, we're going to get made fun of no. Gen Z kids make fun of millennials for this kind of crap yeah, all the time. I'm so sure. we're going to get made fun of, but I don't care. The best time of the internet, I'm standing by it. The best time of the internet was before social media was really a thing. Zanga existed. Maybe MySpace was just taken off, but we didn't care about any of that. All we had was AOL instant messenger. Mm-hmm. And we had a couple of video sites where we could just share like links. Right. Yep. And be like, oh, this is funny. Right. And that the reason that's the best thing is that it didn't suck you in. You would go chat with your friends after school or whatever, send some funny like little little things that you would send to each other at the time, uh, like e cards. Oh my! God. <laughs> like all that stuff. And then did you get my evite? Yeah. And then you would close it and go live your life, right? Like yeah. you had the internet, you had the benefits of it, but it didn't control your life. Yeah. You weren't sitting there on TikTok for thirteen hours a day. Well, right, twenty-four hour screen time on your on your iPhone. <laughs> well, you and I are like that weird age of millennials where we're like right on the cusp, where we kind of grew up without that, but we grew up with technology, so we yeah. are adjusted to it really well. Yeah. Um, I think what are we, we're called zillennials, I believe. Like my like. Oh, well, you're younger than me, though. It's like 1992 to like 1998 are called zillennials. I don't accept that because I didn't have a cell phone until I was like 15. I mean, so it's like, same. I don't know. I had I had a razor. I was yeah. You you, I you was were a, cool, dude. You yeah, had, I had a, you had a phone I had a way before I did. Razor. Who didn't have? A- <laughs> when I got a phone, everybody else had already had phones for years because they existed, but I wasn't allowed. And my phone was like a prepaid phone, and it was just like the brick, you know. Oh yeah. It was like a it was a track phone. Oh my. Right? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Which still exists, by the way, but it was brand new at the time. 
And like, yeah, it was like prepaid. I had Stop a texting number of me. You're wasting all my minutes. Yeah, and you did. You guys wasted all my minutes. Well, yeah, you had to get. So over. I don't know. So I feel like everybody's experience is a little bit different, right? Depending on what you were exposed to growing up, you know, like oh, yeah, not everybody got this, the newest thing when it came out, you yeah. know. And I mean, I feel differently now that I have kids. Um, I'm not going to be the the dad that's like, well, I didn't have a phone until I was 14. It's like, well, the thing is, like, I can't imagine a parent back then not the, finding it that difficult to find out like where is your kid how hard, right. it's hard to contact them now yeah. that i could give my kid a phone and have constant contact with them and know that they're safe and that anxiety is gone i'm gonna give them a phone when the, the age seems right like yeah it'll probably be earlier than when i had a phone but like oh yeah it'll it, probably it, be earlier than 15 i think i think the right time in my opinion we'll, we'll get back to the topic i promise uh the right time in my opinion is like any, whenever they start going out and doing things without us like driving them there, you yes. know, like whenever they get to the point, like, like friends can pick 10, them up, eleven, yeah, and, like, and like they're gonna go to you know whatever event, they're gonna go to a friend's house, they're gonna go to Six Flags, who yeah. knows? Like that's when the time is right, you know, when they're right. when they're three, four years old and they're always riding in the car seat in your car anyway. It's like, I mean, you don't need, yeah. you don't really need it because like you know? I'll admit, like I grew up as a kid in the time where. When I didn't have a phone, I would have to go to my friend's house, knock on the door, and ask if they could hang out. Yeah. And the thing is, sometimes my friends would come and knock on my door, and I would answer, and they'd be like, do you want to hang out? Do you know when, I, when there's days when I don't want to hang out with my friends, but they're there at the door, and I have to say yes anyway, because yep. I can't just say no to their face. Yeah, you can't say no. So with modern technology, I don't have to deal with that. And True. my kids won't either. People aren't just going to come up to your door and ask, can you want to play? You can just be like, ah, oh, I, I have to do this just lie and you actually don't have to do it if you don't want to do it so it's it's basically it's cultivating a culture of lying which is better sure (laughs) anyway let's get back on topic okay That that was a long a long soapbox that we walked across there if you're still here with us thanks of fellow millennials gen zers i you're gone you're fine now they're already on tiktok making fun of us they're like guys i heard this podcast and they said the dumbest crap guys if if any if one of you still here i'm Thank you. I support your generation. Please change change things for the better. Yeah. So I have one more article, and this one is legit, and it it's puts legit, you say it puts the other article uh, in a better in, in a different light that sounds more I don't know true like real. Okay, all right, I'm here. I'm here so as um, I said before, scientists working on the CERN project were suspected of terrorist ties. Um, I don't think you said that before. Oh, I didn't. Oh, sorry. I did not. So no, yeah. that was, that was a bombshell right there. Yep. So this is a New York times article. By the what? Way. There. So I'm not going to read the whole thing to sum it up. There were two scientists. They were French scientists that were working on the project. Um, they were physicists. Wait, um, you said they were French. Yes. You can't trust the French. Oh no. They have the, the wolves. Yeah. The, the beasts of Javaudan. <sighs> That he's back. He's trying to manipulate yeah. time. <laughs> uh, he's trying to manipulate time so he goes back and keeps himself from being shot. Yes. Um, so they interviewed a man named James Gillis, who is a spokesman for CERN. Uh, they made a statement about the terrorist ties. There were two employees uh, that were working on the particle accelerator in uh, since 2003, and they were apprehended in 2009. So they were working on this thing for years a long time they found out uh, i believe in 2000 like early 2009 their all their credentials were bullshit all of none them? of their credentials were real um they claim he did not these people did not see any valuable information they just kind of worked on the project as needed oh yeah they were the janitors they, they didn't see well anything. they were they were claimed physicists and they would help out but they weren't they weren't at a level to know privileged knowledge. So wait, so, but all their credentials were fake. So I'm assuming they weren't even really physicists. So they were like told, hey, do this. And they're like, uh, uh yeah. Right. Well, it sure. turns out they're military. Okay. For Algeria. In the, they're like a Middle Eastern military group. Dead gum Algeria. I don't know. I don't know what to think of Algeria. I actually have no real thoughts on that. They, they were arrested. And they do they they as of as of now I couldn't find any other articles, but it was under investigation as to uh, who they exactly were working for. They know they were brothers. 
uh, they did not release their names, and they the spokesman for CERN said that um, they were not um, – the fact that they were able to get in uh, was a fault on them. They should have been more thorough with their checks. But they're saying that the fact that they were here does not sh- show that we have – the fact that they had to deny this straight out, they say. Right. We don't have any military like alliance or we're not – doing anything for military or government work. We're just doing this for the public. Interesting. But like, why would they have to say that if they could have just said like, Oh, these guys came in here and accidentally like shouldn't have, we're sorry about that. But why do they have to deny that that they were working for the government? So clearly if these guys work for the government, but like we totally don't. Right. You know? And so why would there be people in working for CERN tied to a potential terrorist group trying to steal information like where are they going to work why what information is so valuable that they have to steal when they claim that their information is open to the public and that they aren't doing anything with the military why would they even need to have why would terrorists even need to infiltrate it what's the what's the secret what indeed is the secret could it be the secret recipe for cornflakes. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> no, that's actually super interesting. I, I'm I'm wondering like if I don't know, man. Like, there's it's, a lot of questions around that. Yeah, there's a lot of other tiny theories cr- uh, surrounding CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. Um, like, there's other smaller hadron colliders in like around the world. Like really? there's one in America, but it's way smaller. So it's not the large hadron collider. Right. It's, it's just like a the, collide. The extra, it's a col- small. Yeah. It's a collider. collider. So like the thing about the large hadron collider is it, it's able to reach pretty. I don't think it's able to go light speed, but pretty darn close. Yeah. The other ones don't go that fast. They just, like they do 20 miles an hour. We'll just see what happens. Yeah. They just kind of like take little matchbox cars and just yeah. kind of ram them into each other. It's and, a pine wood derby actually. Yeah. It's all boy scouts and they just kind of run them down a little ramp and yeah. let them hate each other. And that's what all of the, that's what government grants are funding. Just guys hanging out, having a good time. Yeah. Down in a couple of brewskis and yeah. making some cars, making pine wood derby cars, racing. Yeah. Eating cornflakes. <laughs> just eating cornflakes together. Yeah. And none of them masturbate. Yep. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really struck by a lot of this. Honestly, I'm struck by the terrorist ties. I'm struck by the fact that Mandela's name was written on the board before they haven't friggin' turned the thing on. Um, I'm, I'm, well, I'm not, I'll be honest. I'm not that struck by the, the whirlpool and, the Gulf of Aden, but I like, was struck by a smooth criminal. So yeah, I I've been hit by and struck by a smooth criminal. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the lawsuit is still pending. Yeah. <laughs> the, the vortex thing. I wanted to include that just because it's a little out there and it was kind of fun. But the thing that I wanted to read that first and then read the terrorists because like, well, why would they have all this? Like, why would the terrorists need to infiltrate? Why would they need to deny military involvement mm-hmm. at all? Like, like they what, didn't need to what do is that. really going on here? Yeah. What are they actually experimenting on? Hmm. 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 Write your letters to cornflakes at gmail.com. <laughs> no, but really, what what could they like? I mean, even even if they got certain secrets, they couldn't necessarily replicate it. They only got like a piece of the pie, right? Right. So what all they could really figure out is what their plans are. Exactly. You know, and that's why you would have a spy is like because you. You don't need to see how the sausage is made. You just need to know where it's going, you know? Yeah. And so they they might have uncovered something that would have been detrimental to Algeria somehow. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I mean, there's if if you want to read uh the article, I'll link it. I summarized it very much. Um there's a couple other details that you can go into and to get more details on who they are and the actual names and organizations. Um I'm just trying to keep it a little more lighthearted, but it's just interesting to think about. And that is an end to the concerning journey we went through about CERN. So, again, dear listener, we pass the questions on to you. Are you worried about the Large Hadron Collider and its smaller counterparts across the globe? Are you worried about Algeria? The Gulf of Aden, maybe? Maybe you're worried about... Nelson Mandela, 
what he had to do with all of this. Was he the mastermind behind the entire thing? I don't know. Possibly. Is our timeline slowly being corrected from the mistakes made in 2012? Is it like a tower of Legos that was knocked over in 2012 and is slowly being built back up brick by brick? Yes. But when something is knocked over and with Legos, sometimes you miss those few pieces. So will we cause more problems building an incomplete structure? Will we all just cease to exist? Cornflakes. <laughs>